Arnold, I'm David Vose. I hope you're all having a wonderful day. It's a beautiful day in Arkansas. Um, still cloudy and uh, of course winter's here and uh, um, getting a little colder. But you know friends, I got a really, 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 really interesting special series that I want to start getting involved in. So we've been talking about um, spiritual things for a long time. And not that what we're about to talk about isn't spiritual. Oh, it's spiritual. But um, we're going we're gonna to take a little twist because I'll tell you, you know, when you're running for the hills because, uh, you know, there's a hurricane coming or, or uh, you know, somebody's coming with guns, right? You got to get out of here and you got to run for the hills. I mean, you don't have a lot of time to talk about God and spiritual things. You're just interested in getting out of there. I mean, you might have about five seconds to drop to your knees and give a prayer. After that, you're just grabbing your kids. You're getting out of Dodge, right? Because there's something that is about to happen in the world. Now, we've been talking about this something for a long, long time. And there's been a lot of somethings that have happened. So it's not like something doesn't always happen, right? Something always happens. But up to now, you know, we're still here, right? But imagine before 1914 when they had World War I. Imagine what people were thinking. Uh, well, you know, uh, there's been wars and reports of wars and famines and pestilences all throughout history. But, uh, man, what was it going to come with World War I was something they had never seen. Especially if you lived in Europe. Same thing with World War II. I mean, that's a pretty big deal. It's especially for people in Germany and Russia and Poland and, you know, France uh, and Japan. <laughs> it wasn't no little deal. It wasn't nothing, nothing small. And I'm sure there was a lot of tears that were shed. So, you know, now to start with, let me just tell you, all of you people that are listening to this, the first thing I am going to get, I know in the bottom, in the little info box and stuff, and people in message boxes or wherever you call them, I know a lot of people are going to say, oh, well, you just uh, clickbait, you know, when you just try and scare people and stuff. No, friends, we're not trying to scare anybody. You know, Paul Revere wasn't trying to scare people. I guarantee it. He was trying to warn people. And, you know, the, the concept that this video is going to somehow go to millions of clicks and I'm going to make all this money or something, it didn't cross my mind. It's not even one iota of the reason why I'm putting this out. I'm putting this video out because I know something that you need to know. And in this particular case, what we're talking about is a question that we've been asking for a long, long time. Um, what's the future going to be like? We are in for an economic collapse. And some of you may say, no, I don't agree with that. I mean, you know, I have faith that everything's going to be fine. Well, if you have faith in this system, you're a fool. I'm going to tell you something. The current system that we live under has produced a lot of things, a lot of wealth. And, and you know, um, so in that sense, you know, you might think, well, it's a good thing because we're all, you know, sitting pretty, you know, we all have our brand new houses and cars and everything. All right. But the thing about it is, is that we don't even need a lot of this stuff that we have. And, you know, it was fun while it lasted, but... It's just like population uh, explosions. You might not be able to do a lot about it, but you can't deny the fact that we've gone from just a couple of billion to seven billion in not too many years. And the potential for there being too many people on this earth and what are the ramifications? You know, at some point, we're going to reach a point where there's just too many people. And, you know, your quality of life is going to have to go down. You're not going to have the room. 
see, in a lot of ways, we have a lot of nice things in the world today. But at the same time, we're not necessarily happier. I hear people saying all the time, well, you know, things are better now than they've ever been. People aren't living longer. Uh, the quality of our life, I mean, you know, let's say you live to be 80, 90 years old or 100. If you're living the last 10 years of your life in a bed with a tube up your nose, you know, you've got to consider the fact that that's not necessarily a better life. So the fact that they're keeping people alive with pills, but that doesn't necessarily mean, the, mean that the quality of people's lives are really any better than they ever have been. The same thing goes with the fact that people have more luxuries and they have better things, but they don't have as much time to spend with their families, maybe. You know, you may have a really nice car and a lot of nice things and a nice home. Maybe you can get two, two vacations a year. But it doesn't necessarily mean that you have quality time with your family, that you're at peace inside yourself, and that you're happy. People, they always say, well, back in the 1800s, people died, you know, in their wagons going west, and, and it was a rough life, and it was cold. But, you know, there's nothing necessarily wrong with being cold. Sometimes, you know, you can be cold outside, you know, around a campfire, and you're not in a luxurious home, but you're actually happier around that campfire. So, the thing is, this, the thing is, is in those days, when people outside around their campfires with their families, at least they were around a campfire with their families. And they weren't, you know, living alone, single, you know, without a wife and their children are um, in foster care or kids only have one parent or, 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 or in a house where the parents are arguing. Yeah, there's all kinds of luxury, but that child sitting in front of a television set and he's not getting any one-on-one -on -one attention with his father. They're not going hunting. He says, oh, well, back in the day when you had to go and hunt for your food, man, that would be terrible. Yeah, but, you know, that's what little boys like doing is going hunting with their father. So, you see, quality of life is not necessarily better or worse. But let me tell you something. Why, then, would we be in this situation? If it's not better, why are we continually going forward in this pursuit uh, and this age of progress if it's not really progress because there's somebody that's making off with all the money and all the, the power and they're they're addicted to it now they may not be happier either but it's this system that it's like heroin right you the more you do it the more addicted you are and the sicker you get and the broker, you know, so why do you keep doing it? Because you're addicted. And this is what's going on. This system we have, you're going you're to hear all kinds of lies on your television and in your circle of friends and, and, and on the news, they're going to, you know, Fox News is even going to probably tell you, oh, we're better off than we've ever been. But the truth is, is you're not. And the only reason why we're not going to stop on this upward progression is because somebody's getting money and they're going to keep you know, luring you ahead with the carrot because they want you, they're trying to lead you to their, uh, to their lair and they're going to, uh, they're going to use you and eat you up for dinner. They're going to make all kinds of money off of you, off of society. So society is built around banks and, um, corporations and stuff and they're making money off of you so that they can have wealth and power. Now they're addicted to that power. They're not necessarily happy. But this is a system that cannot last. Now, this entire banking system that we've been going on for a long time, and I don't mean, I mean, you, you know, there's different times. You could say, well, banking got started in 1400, you know, or something. But I'm talking about, especially in the last, you know, 100 years and 50 years, this system that we've been plowing through since about 1913, we started taxing people here in America. It is an entirely completely and absolutely a Ponzi scheme. See, and because it's been going on for so long, we're, we're thinking, well, it's just normal then. It's just going to last forever. It can't, you know, we're just going to have to accept it and this is the way we're going to live forever. You know, the progress that we're, that we're involved in is going to keep going and, you know, 
there's going to be more and more technology and it's just going to keep going and we don't know where it's going to end. But let me tell you something. It's going to end. It is going to end. Because this is a Ponzi scheme. Let me explain to you about something. You might have heard that we have $20 trillion debt in this country. But what you probably haven't heard, well, you may have heard it, but not a lot of people are talking about it. But we have hundreds of trillions of dollars in actual debt. You see, Medicare and Social Security, um, the your pensions and all of these um, the debt that you owe the bank for your house and your car and all of this stuff. All of this money has got to be paid back as well. And if one of these dominoes go down, then all of them go down. We're talking about hundreds of trillions of dollars worth of debt. And you see, the lenders or the bankers, they're not stupid. They have been... Imagine if you had a scheme where you could suck everybody's money out from, and you could... Remember, to start with, they had to create this money. It's fiat money, right? It doesn't exist. There's no, it used to be a gold standard. So banking goes all the way back. But at one time, it was under a, the standard of gold. And so gold was backing every transaction that you had. And, and so, you know, and, and so in, in that sense, it goes all the way back to Rome and, and Persia and Babylon. I mean, they, they traded with gold. Then they, they started creating paper money that represented the gold. But um, recently, not that long ago, we went from the gold back standard to a fiat standard. And they really started doing that. They, that really started in about 1971 is when that went, went through a transition where we got rid of the gold standard. And of course, if you remember back in 1971, there was this big thing called inflation. And remember Jimmy Carter and all of that stuff going on. And uh, so... Because it didn't come, the world didn't end and everything, we just think, oh, well, then that's just, that's just the market, right? It goes up and down, there's inflation, there's, you know, that's just the way it is, but it'll all be fine. If the markets do crash, they'll just crash a little bit and, and sort of reset and we'll just start up again, you know? Well, let me tell you something. If, if, well, as we said, it's a big Ponzi scheme. Now, if you were going to, if you had a way to suck everybody's money out from under them, Let's say you could start a business tomorrow that would just, you know, catch on like wildfire and everybody would want to get involved in it. And you know that within five years you could just suck everybody's money right out from under and you'd have all the money. Wouldn't you try it? Wouldn't you do it? I mean, a lot of people would. And so this is what they did. They came up with a thing called fiat money. And what they did was they started offering people the ability to buy into the system with these IRAs and bonds and stocks and all that stuff. And so nowadays we have not only the economy, but we've got the stock market. And when the stock market goes way up, we think, wow, oh, everything's doing so well. But what's really happening is it's a Ponzi scheme. They want you to think that everything's doing so well because of the stock market. Here's the thing. The stock market's not based on any value. Walmart might be worth a billion dollars and Yet the stock market price of Walmart could be $10 billion. Everybody's running out to buy Walmart, you know. Well, the people who own Walmart, see, they have different kinds of stock in the company. Their stock is not something that gets sold off. When, when the price of Walmart stock goes down and everybody has to start selling it, what they're doing is they're selling off all of these other kinds of stocks and bonds that you buy into. It's the public your 401k or your whatever. It's, it's the masses of all these people, they, they created this system where you could buy into it. Now, why did they do that? So that you could take this $1 billion and get the world to think it's worth $10 billion, and everybody would buy into it. Now they've got all this paper that says it's worth all this money. And then what they do is every few years they have a stock market crash. And so all of this liquidation gets taken off. And the people who lent the money still have their money. But all of the people who, who did all the work, the truck drivers and the store workers and, and the peasants and all the people who've been buying into all of this system, it goes down and they're broke. 
And so it just keeps, what's happening is, is that we put all the labor and all the, uh, it's called consumer confidence. We put all this into the system and we believe in it. And we keep buying into it. And we buy all these beautiful homes and then we go bankrupt and we lose our home. And the bank gets the home. And the bank gets to resell it and make more money. And then they start another bubble. But the bank never loses. Remember back in 2008 when this big housing bubble happened and it was basically a huge, huge crash and, and, a, and a depression we went through. They were calling it a recession, but it was really a depression. And remember we had to bail out the banks because if we hadn't bailed out the banks, there would have been a, a collapse. But we didn't allow it to collapse because we just bailed out the banks, but the people didn't get bailed out. So if you had a home, you lost it. You lost your car, you lost your stuff. The bank didn't lose nothing. See, they still got the bank. So it's a Ponzi scheme. They keep telling everybody, hey, put all your money in the bank. And we got this system where you can have dollar bills and you can pay all of these debts with this piece of paper. And you can go to work and get this piece of paper and you can buy a home. Wow, this is great. Well, it goes on. It works for a while until you lose your home. And I guarantee, I don't care who you are, you're going to lose your home. Coming up here pretty quick. You're going to lose everything. There's another housing bubble, and there's another bubble that's even bigger than that one coming. Because it's really, it's part of the same one. Back in 1971, they, you know, there, there was a time when, when the banks uh, said to everybody in the world, we want all of your gold. And they confiscated into the, you know, the central bank of the world, it confiscated everybody's gold. And then... They created this new system where it's basically fiat money. It wasn't based on gold anymore. So all of these banks around the world were just lending money, printing fiat money, and this bubble's been building and building. Now there's little bubbles in between. In 2008, we, we, the housing bubble went down, and we kind of skated through that, and, and a lot of people lost their homes and stuff like that, and people got poor and people had to start over again while other people were getting rich. Remember um, Warren Buffett bought Wells Fargo because the price of a stock for Wells Fargo was like a hundred and some dollars or something and then the next day it was down to like five dollars and so he just bought the whole thing for because he was a rich man anyway so he purchased for almost nothing this entire bank. Well you see basically what he's just doing is the, the wealthy or just you know, uh, getting everybody, the peasants, to buy into this thing. And then the, the wealthy end up getting to purchase the same company for a lot less because of all the people that lose all of the money in these big crashes. So it's just a scheme that they just keep doing and these bubbles keep bursting because of all this fiat money. Well, when you've got a system like that, what happens is, is that they know that eventually it's going to bust. And so the people who know what's going on, they put these, they have commercials and they'll say, buy this and buy that, knowing that you put all your money into this and then it's going to go down a bit at some point. They're going to, it's going to collapse and all your money is going to go away. See, but what they did with your money while you gave it to them was they went out and purchased all the gold. So they're hoarding all the gold, which is where the real wealth is. They purchased all the, the real estate, the land, right? They, they got the, the earth, they got the gold, they got the stuff that's valuable. And they, got, they lured you into buying fancy houses and, and um, you know, fancy cars. And then you lost your car in your house and they're like, well, that's all right. You know, the world goes on. Meantime, they're consolidating their power. And with their wealth, they can buy senators and governors and presidents. And they can make more laws to, to say that, well, you know, the, the public is not protected. Like in 2008, when there was this big crash, well, the public didn't get bailed out, but the bankers did. So they can control the law. So that it just good for them and bad for us. So this whole system's been going on like a Ponzi scheme. They've been bringing everybody into it. 
and we're basically building up this huge system where now we've got 7 billion people and these 7 billion people are depending upon technology to feed them and technologies depending on finances to back it, to finance it and if the financial markets go down, the technologies don't have the money or the financing to build the trucks and, and get the trucks to market and feed us. So they've just been blindly going on thinking, man, let's just build, you know, this technology, which is going to support more people. We can farm better and we can tear down all the trees. We've got these workers, there are slaves, we can, we can let them just continue to have children and, and, and put them into these little apartments and they'll go out and work for us. They'll be our slaves. And then every so often, we think we've got a little, you know, they have to offer us stuff to do this. They have to say, well, we can give you a new car if you'll work for us. You know, we want you to create on an assembly line all these little parts so that we can make these computers so that we can have total control so we can ship everything around the world and get you all working more efficiently so that we can build these satellites to put them in the air so we can have control over you. And once we build this machine that has total control over everybody, then we can sort of control the little, little mice to go around, around, around the little Ferris wheel. We can throw cheese in there once in a while and get them to keep doing it, get them addicted to it. So they don't even know there's an outside to go to. They don't even know what the world's really like. We'll tell them that the world's better off and that they're better off. And we'll give them some things they like, like a little, a little wheel they can run around on and, and makes them happy and uh, gives them security to be in that little cage. As long as they're fed and they can exercise, put some water in the cage, they'll be fine. But if the system ever goes down and collapses, then all these 7 billion people that's working to keep the system going aren't going to get fed and they're going to starve to death and it's going to be a Mad Max situation. And the question is, when is that going to happen? Not if, but when. Now I have some bad news for you and, it, and like I said, I don't want to give you bad news. I'm going to give you some good news too. All right, I'm going to explain to you, first of all, what's about to happen. We've got to know. We've got to know the truth. And then we're going to, through the, in this series, we're going to figure out what we're going to do to get through it. Because we're going to have to get through this. Because I'm telling you this, this is imperative that we talk about this right now. Because I believe that the, the whole economic system is, is due to collapse any moment. And I, and I mean any moment. I, I, it could be tomorrow. And I, I'm not kidding you. Before 2019. And if not, it will be during, probably during 2019. It, the latest this could probably even go is 2021. We don't know exactly when they're going to implode. But I have a feeling I, I can show you some, some indications that this is about to go. All the market indications that are going on right now are saying that it's going to go down in early 2019. And I mean within weeks. And I'm telling you, before we prove that that's going to happen, let me just tell you, you need to make sure that you get everything out of the stock market. If you own bonds and stocks and 401ks and, and you know, even homes, I'd sell them immediately. I'd sell your home right now. Because if your homes, if you're paying, if you got a mortgage and you're paying $100,000 for your home, well, after this is over, your home's going to be worth 50000 or something. And so you're going to lose a lot of money. You should get your 100000 out of it now. And just wait until after this crash and we get through this reset. And then get you a different home later. Or build your home in the woods. I'll tell you what... what I'll, we're, going to, we're going to talk about what we're going to have to do to get through this. But the stock market's going to crash. Now, just was it the day before yesterday, it went down... Uh, the biggest, uh, I think they may have even said it's the largest one day drop in history. Okay. Now you say, yeah, but we made it through that. The next day it rose another thousand points. Well, that volatility 
is not something to sniff at. Okay, there's a reason for that. What they're doing is they're consolidating all the wealth. They're, you have to understand, your pensions and your retirement plans and all of this is not going to be there for you. I guarantee, forget your pension. If you're not going to be able to have, you won't have that to live on. Because your pension is basically all the money that you put in, like at your company, you've been putting all this money into your pension. All that money is invested. They've already invested about 50% of that in these companies that are way overvaluated. So when the stock market, when the stock market crashes, the first thing that's going to go down, what's going to make it crash is these overvalued stocks. So, you know, even, even Social Security and Medicare, I mean, do you know that up until 2007, well, back when this thing, this social net was started here in America, uh, your Social Security was based on one person getting benefits and 150 people putting benefits in. Well, starting in, in 2017, it was based on two people working, putting money in, and one person taking money out. And so in beginning, right at 2017, that's when it finally got to a place where there is more money in Social Security going out than there is going in. So what that means is Social Security is at a point now where it is untenable and it cannot continue that way. But they have it covered, don't worry, they know what they're doing, they don't care. See, they don't care. That was never the reason for any of these, this has all been a Ponzi scheme since some few years ago when they started this scheme. They transferred from gold-backed economy to this fiat economy. economy. So this big Ponzi scheme is not only that they're getting you to buy into this market with fiat money, building up these big bubbles that they bust and consolidate their money, but it's also this entire scheme that they've been telling you all this time that don't worry about it, when you get older, we're going to take care of you. See, they just don't care about what happens to you when you get old. You're going to be useless to them when you get old. So you're not going to have that money. So most of the people then are going to reach this retirement age and they're not going to be able to retire. They're not going to have Medicare. This Obamacare is an Obama scheme. There never was, it never was intended that they would take care of you. It was just a way to make you say, oh, let's have faith in the system. They'll take care of us. They'll give us... Medicaid and they'll give us Social Security, but you see, it's just so that you'll go ahead and have confidence in the system and keep putting money into the 401ks and you know buying IRAs and 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 you know the, your company says you got to have a pension, so you got to put money into it and they'll match it. The truth is, is that it's just a scheme. That money's just evaporating. It's not going to be there. It's being consolidated into their own little pot in the center because all this work and all of this effort and the blood, sweat, and tears that you're putting into this over these years is just to build up a system that's going to put them in power over you. You're building satellites in the air and then giving that, you know, the CIA, which is done by taxpayers' money, we put those satellites in the air when we gave it to Google. They had this all planned out. They knew it was going to be so many years. They'd build up this big bubble. Then they'd, boom, crash the market. And they'd have all this infrastructure. And then the people that were ready for retirement wouldn't get their retirement. Because this is a pension. This is the promise. Right? Your Social Security and, and your pensions and your Medicare and your Obamacare. It's just a bunch of promises along the way. And they're like, well, we can't help it. Trump came along and, you know, and, and now he's going to build a wall around the United States. And England's going to Brexit. It's going to leave the European Union. Why? Because Europe's going down. And so what's going to happen here is here in this country, when this all goes down, we're going to put a wall around our country. Because millions, you think a lot of people trying to come into America now, right, over the border. You haven't seen anything 
yet when those people start coming over the border here, when the economy crashes. You know how Venezuela crashed and the gold prices went up over there and it's illegal to buy gold in Venezuela because they don't want you to buy real gold, just the paper money that says you got gold because then they can just confiscate that. You, you won't get any gold if you're just buying paper pieces of paper that say you have gold, right? You have to have physical gold. And then you better hide it real well because they'll come and they'll confiscate it anyway. So in this country, you know, when Honduras is crashing right now and Guatemala, they're so poor, they're barely hanging on. And Italy and France and, and these countries are just about to fall. You saw what's going on in the news. France has got riots in the streets because they're trying to raise their taxes and, and they're worried about their pensions as well. Greece has already gone down pretty much and, and so Europe will fall I guarantee you, it's not a matter of if but when and I mean when this year I mean within weeks Europe's gonna fall within weeks or months the whole system is gonna fall and then everybody's gonna be trying to get into Australia and Canada and the United States and England and these little areas that are uh, still hanging on. And uh, in this country, I really don't know if you're going to have Social Security. I mean, you know, if Trump is on our side, then he could. So I don't think he could ha he could do anything now. Because if he tried to get rid of the Federal Reserve right now, it would definitely precipitate the fall of the entire economy worldwide. And I don't think anybody, even including Trump, would want to do that because the world would go into a, a time where millions and millions and millions and millions of people would die, would starve to death, and it would be very, very bad. Because you see, all this stuff that China's been doing, buying up our debt, it's not real. These Chinese are not really buying up the real valuable things. They're only buying up fiat money, paper. And when the fire comes and that paper's burned up, it's gone. There's nothing. There's no value there. So don't worry about China. See, it, it, Chinese are just puppets. They're just being pulled along by a string. The investors are using those poor, poor Chinese and the poor Mexicans and using them for cheap labor and to build our little Walmart trinkets so that we can keep the American people da bedazzled and keep them working because we're, the American people have been the ones that have, that have been building this system all around the world. It's our tax money that's building the military that goes in and is manipulating entire countries and governments. Because you see, before the great collapse occurs, because they've got this all planned, what they're trying to do is they're trying to develop a system in order to get us all involved so that we'll get in there and create this system that will displace us. This, this whole thing is just to, to, to destroy human beings. That's what it's all about. It's a race to try and destroy the, the human race. See, the whole thing's been planned from the very beginning of time City-states, governments, they kept moving around, teaching mankind laws, putting us under rules and government so that we would be slaves. That's why there are slaves. We serve them. And it's gotten very, very sophisticated, putting the final touches on a system where they won't need us anymore. They, don't, they won't need slaves anymore. They'll just need a, a, a few slaves, but they won't need very many of them. They'll always need us to do some of their work. But the only reason we need 7 billion people and they haven't gotten rid of, you know, they keep hurting us into cities and, and giving us nice, fancy, flashy things to lure us in to keep doing more and fooling us because we're just like stupid little animals. We just keep going for it. Oh, good evening, no sex. Oh, let me have some. And then we go and, and just so we can have that fancy car or, you know, the fancy clothes and the nice houses, we just keep working ourselves to a, into a frenzy, right? Punching the clock and going to work and oh my goodness, 
just working night and day. We don't even have time to use our Jeeps and, and, and go on our vacations. And we don't have time to spend time with our family. Our children are crazy and we're all on medications just trying, you know, got to have a medication to get to work. See, this is no fun. Well, they make us addicted to the medications. See, we know we're dying on this medication, but we don't care. We know the system's killing us, but we don't care because we we just got to keep going. So, you see, we'll just keep on going, putting all of our blood, sweat, and tears into this to build this system that's going to make us obsolete. And so, we're putting on the final touches to this. And, and Social Security has just been this thing, this, this promise that we would have Social Security after we worked our fingers to the bones and we could go on vacation, have our fancy things and go on vacation the rest of our lives. Well, funny thing is, is most of us don't make it till retirement age. We get sick or we're in the hospital or we're just not healthy enough to enjoy our lives. The other thing is, is that once we get 60 or whatever, you know, it costs so much money for health care that it bankrupts us. So we don't have anything that takes away all of our wealth. We can't leave it to our children. It's a Ponzi scheme. They know exactly what they're doing. And the Social Security that they promised us, it's not going to be there because it's all uh, the pensions and all of these these programs, all this money we've been putting into it for our retirement. It's going into these 401ks and IRAs and all of these things, which it's just a big bubble that's going to burst, and they know that. Their money's not going to go anywhere. They'll get bailed out, but we won't. And so right now, the system with the Social Security and Medicare and Obamacare and all of this, is, that's why they haven't replaced it, because there's no need to. That's why they haven't done anything about the debt, because they know it's all going to crash. That They know how they're going to get rid of the debt. No, oh, they know how they're going to do it, and it ain't going to be good for you and me. But the problem I'm trying to point out here in this video and in this series of videos is that it's much worse than you think, friends. It is much worse than you think. You see, it isn't just going to be a financial crash because we're now at the point with the satellites in the air that in this computer and, and, and this technology that they really, you know, it's going to be automated. See, Walmart's already got the thing where you come and you pick it up and you don't need to go into the store, you don't need people to put it on the shelves anymore like Amazon. They just send it in the mail. So it's automated and there's not going to be any more need for workers. See, won't even need cars. The only reason they gave us cars is to get to work. And if we don't have to go to work, you know, all this machines are going to build everything. And uh, so a lot of the stuff, just the frills and the fancy stuff is going to go away because that's not necessary. And so that was just there to entice us. So when this goes down, we're now, a lot of people don't get this. A lot of people don't understand this because they don't see that this is not going to be like any other time in history. They've had this all planned. And, it, and the plan included the satellites and, and the technology that they've gotten us to. Because so they know that now that we're at this point, they don't need 7 million people anymore. And so there's going to be a mass die-off. There's going to be you know, look, if, if, if the economy goes down, and it will, the finances are going to collapse. Because that's the only way they can get us out of this debt. You can't pay it off. We can't pay it off. So they just simply al allowed us to work ourselves to the bone, buying, putting all of our money into this bubble, thinking that this was, you know, belonged to us, this house. But they didn't tell us that this house is in a bubble, that it, it's all this debt. It's a 30-year mortgage. We're not going to be able to pay for it. It's just a pipe dream. So we're going to lose our house, and we're going to lose your house real soon. But it's not just your house. You won't be able to go and buy things at the grocery market. This is why we need to do videos, because if, you, if, if the trucks don't run and there's no food for, the, for everybody and, and the, the market's bare, then you're going to have to learn how to garden, and you're going to have to figure out What's important? That car, your house, sell it. Right now, you've got very little time. You need to take whatever money you have, cash, and turn that into a piece of gold, physical gold, a piece of land, a shovel, a tool, so you can garden, and knowledge, so you can survive. So anyway, I'm going to leave it there, because we have 
a whole bunch of things to talk about. And um, I'm going to go ahead and close and we're going to do a video number two and we're going to continue on with this theme. And we're going to talk about Bitcoin and blockchain because you see, it's not going to be over when it's over. A lot of people are going to die in this Mad Max transfer to a different system. But the world's not going to pass away. And what they don't know, and that's the good news that we're going to talk about, what they don't know is that as is the case and, and has been the case every time they've tried these things, they always lose. So they think that they're going to transfer us over into this other system where they're going to control everything. But we've got a little thing called Bitcoin, blockchain, that is going to foul up their plan. Now it won't, it won't happen immediately because there's still going to be a lot of bad things happen. But in the end, we're going to transition into a different system where they won't be able to have this control over us. And I'm going to talk to you about that, which is called blockchain. It's a new system that, um, just like when in the Inquisition, when they tried murdering everybody. Well, we came over here and made a constitution. Well, that gave us a little bit of freedom and then a little bit of time until they started taking that over. Well, now there are little Ponzi schemes about to come to an end and they think they're going to take all their marbles and go home. The problem is, is that when their marbles run out, this terrible time of trouble that we're going to go through is going to affect them as well. And they're not going to fare that much better during this great trans transfer and this new system that's coming. And they may have plans to, to make a system that, you know, keeps us under control, but it won't necessarily be what they think in the end. So we're going to talk about that in the coming videos. And this here is David Vos. I'll see you again tomorrow, guys. Have a good one.